Lots of folks have a fear of flying. Athletes are certainly no different. Hall of Famer Carl Yastrzemski never liked to fly. And Wayne Gretzky fought his fear by actually sitting in the cockpit of some Air Canada flights during takeoffs and landings. Ted Tallner, the head football coach at San Diego State, has every right to fear flying. Despite a life-altering incident, he has moved on. But Lisa Salters tells us he does sometimes look back in wonder. He never coached a game. What if there was no 42-year marriage? What if there weren't any sons or daughters? What if there were no 10 grandchildren? What if Ted Tolner just stayed in his seat in 1960 and the last 40 years never happened? I was on that engine and I heard the engine stop working and then you knew you were going down. And I remember seeing the stars and the plane just started vibrating, just, just unreal. I remember saying we're going to crash, a cover up. There was fire, there was people scrambling around, it was utter chaos. They said that there was a plane carrying the Mustangs and it crashed on takeoff and there were no survivors. October 29, 1960, in the evening hours after a lopsided loss to Bowling Green University, the California Polytechnic football team arrived at the Toledo Express Airport. Ted Tolner was the Mustangs' starting quarterback. It was a uh, very intimate weather in regards to visibility. I mean, it was almost down to zero. It was just soup. And we board the aircraft, and I remember the pilot walking down the aisle saying, we're going to give this thing the old college try. This is bad weather. The twin-engine C-46 was a World War II leftover, and it was overloaded by as much as 2,000 pounds. Just seconds after takeoff, the left engine gave out. You said you were sitting on the wing. Mm -hmm. You heard the engine go out. Yeah. What went through your mind then? Well, I knew, I was, I, I knew we were going down. The plane landed on its left wing, cartwheeled and split in half fate came down to seat assignments. And that is where the lines of destiny crossed between Ted Tolner and an airsick prone wide receiver named Curtis Hill. Just before takeoff, Hill had been looking to move to the front of the plane in hope of a smoother ride. Well, Curtis had asked me, would I change seats with him? And, and I said, sure, I, I didn't get sick going back. So he moved into the front where I was going back there and I moved into his seat, you know, by his request. And I didn't see any problem with it. And, you know, as fate would have it, Basically, the people from where I was sitting forward were the ones that were killed, and from where I was back were the ones that made it. 22 people were killed, including 16 players. Tolner was among 28 survivors. His worst injury was a broken ankle. After two weeks in a Toledo hospital, it was time for Tolner to go back to California, and how he got there was up to him. Most of his teammates went back by train or by car. But Tolner made a decision to ignore the past in favor of his future. So he came back here to the Toledo airport, got on a plane, and flew home. I consciously thought that, you know, you always, you, at the time, you got to get back on the horse if you get knocked off, so to speak. Well, that's the mentality I had because I knew I wanted to get into coaching and I knew I was going to be flying more. So I just, my, my decision was really easy. Explode, Larry, out of baby. Good change, good change, good plant. Tolner's career has taken him through 37 years of coaching high school, college, and pro quickness, football. He was the quarterback's coach at Brigham Young when Jim McMahon led the nation in passing in 1981. He coached four years at USC, which included an upset win over Ohio State in the 1985 Rose Bowl. Now entering his seventh season as head coach of San Diego State, Tolner has endured decades of road games and recruiting trips, hundreds of flights since the one he will never forget. I've accepted that if I want to be in this profession, then these are, what, these are things that you need to do. And uh, so I've accepted that and made that you know, conscious decision. And, uh, and it's because I like what I'm doing. I've been able to, to overcome whatever that fear level is. I couldn't do what he's done with all the airplanes, team airplanes he's been on. That really has to bring back memories. But more than flying with a football team, Toner says memories of the crash roll in when the fog does, as it did when outside the lines visited his home. This is the kind of eerie feeling, and that's about the only thing that flashes me back. Now, if I was going to go fly somewhere tonight, I'd be, I wouldn't want to do that. But, you know, if I had to, I would do it, but I wouldn't want to. There's some duckies in the water right over there, huh?
coaches that almost weren't for Ted Tolner. A coach, a father, a granddad. Imagining what if isn't something the Tolners do much these days, but the fabric of this family will always be stitched with threads of the past. Every family member knows about 1960 and an old teammate named Curtis Hill, a man who traded much more than just a seat. Do I remember hearing about him and my father for years? He used to keep his picture on his dresser, and as a child I didn't... It was just my friend from college, you know, until I got older, then I was told the whole story. I think of, of that, and, and that makes me appreciate life even more. I know that name. I don't know a lot of names on that plane, but I know his name. The last 41 years for you have been because yeah, of a seat change. That's right, and that's, you know, how do you answer that? I mean, I, I mean, why? You know, why did that happen? I can tell you what happened, you know. A friend of mine asked me to change seats, but why? I mean, is there any rationale? Is there any logic to it? No, but had we not, then I don't have a family, and, uh, you know, my wife's a widow, and uh, yes, I and mean, that's exactly what it comes down to. If you want to put it in the simplest form, it's a seat change. You make it, and you're here, and you get a chance to, to do something with your life, and if you don't, it's over.